People bring up constipation on the carnivore diet almost as much as they talk about fiber being good for your heart, but where is all this information coming from? The Guardian recently published this article, and if we look at the study they reference, it's from Eat Lancet. Now, who's in charge of Eat Lancet? Billionaire vegan activist Gunhild A. Stordalen. But hey, no conflict of interest here, boys. I'm the one being paid by the meat and egg industry. Clearly, the 2001 Toyota Camry in my driveway is a 2019 Benz in disguise. First, I would like to dispel some common myths about fiber from relieving constipation, reducing risk rates for bowel cancer, being heart healthy, as well as benefiting to a positive gut microbiome. Then we'll touch on actual bowel movements on a carnivore diet ranging from constipation to diarrhea. So the first thing people usually bring up in regards to the carnivore diet is, well, don't you get constipated without any fiber and eating all that meat? This study actually shows the opposite. Soluble and insoluble fibers have different effects on global irritable bowel symptoms. Now, in regards to what most people would have you believe, this study actually found quite the opposite. Constipation and its associated symptoms can be effectively reduced by stopping or even lowering the intake of dietary fiber. And then another thing people like to bring up on the carnivore diet is that your bowel will explode with cancer or something of the sort. There is no evidence suggesting that increased fiber intake prevents bowel cancer. It was then reviewed and after accounting for other dietary risk factors, high dietary fiber intake was not associated with a reduced risk of colorectal cancer. What they don't want you to know is that this study actually found an inverse association. The relative risk was 0.72, and a relative risk of 1 means baseline. If it's over 1, that means there's a positive association, but they literally found the complete opposite, yet they didn't really acknowledge it at all. Fiber is also used as a heart-healthy aspect of whole grains in regards to lowering cholesterol, but do people seriously think that fiber enters your bloodstream and, like, tastes cholesterol out of the arteries. This is just completely, completely like, I don't even know what to say. Now, fiber in your bloodstream is something that would definitely cause a heart attack. And one funny thing to say here would be, do you ever see a drain clogged with fat? Of course you do. But every time the drain is clogged with fat, there was generally some paper or maybe some fiber in front of the fat. Here we have a study showing the opposite of what is claimed. Insoluble cereal fiber relates negatively to cardiovascular disease and diabetes. Another study shows that psyllium, a popular fiber supplement, does not lower cholesterol. Here's one more, demonstrating that fiber had no beneficial effect on men with coronary disease. People love to bring up that fiber contributes to having a healthy gut microbiome by feeding certain bacteria, but this study actually found that gut issues such as irritable bowel disease fail to have a correlation with dysbiosis and Crohn's severity. Last but not least, some vegan clown is probably going to bring up diverticulitis. Now, this is more of a manifestation of Western civilization's need for frequent defecation. You have to ask yourself, are you constipated or have you just not gone to the bathroom for a day, which is not the end of the world. It has also been shown that a high fiber diet is actually worse for diverticulitis. Now, if you have constipation or diarrhea on a carnivore diet, really any diet in general, it could be one or several of these factors. Hydration. You might just have to drink more water, and if that doesn't work, changing your water source might be a good idea because unnatural parts per million as well as various chemicals can affect your gut microbiome. I've actually noticed when drinking certain types of water that it actually constipates me and that water didn't necessarily have a high mineral content. So there was definitely some negative chemical component to the water. It can also be electrolyte imbalance. So sodium, potassium, calcium, and magnesium each have different functions in the body. And if you consume them in improper ratios, this can cause issues. Potassium is known to cause constipation. Calcium from dairy is known to cause constipation. Uh, these can deplete magnesium. And that's part of the reason why 
a popular magnesium supplement, citrate, it's magnesium bound to a citric acid molecule, is called magnesium citrate because it literally makes you shit in your pants. Magnesium glyconate, which is magnesium bound to a glycine molecule, doesn't have as much of a laxative effect, but it can certainly induce a bowel movement. So a lot of bowel issues can easily be solved by taking a magnesium supplement, but you definitely want to analyze what the issue is if it is an electrolyte imbalance. So if you salt your food too much, that can deplete potassium, which can deplete magnesium, and that results in constipation. If you're supplementing potassium, that can deplete magnesium. And if you're consuming dairy, as I said, the calcium can deplete magnesium and potassium. So electrolytes are a little bit tricky. Uh, an easy baseline is to stop salting your food, stop consuming dairy, make sure to hydrate and see if things improve. Another thing that ties in more with the carnivore diet and diarrhea is high omega-6 fats. Consuming low quality animal foods that are high in these like chicken, pork, eggs, are definitely inflammatory. I've noticed that regardless of whether it's a rendered fat or raw, I cannot digest high omega-6 fats. Duck fat, eggs, chicken, pork, does not matter. If it is a low quality food, I cannot digest the fat. The alternative to this is switching to, of course, lower omega-6 foods like beef, fish, and although cattle are fed grain, their digestive system processes it differently. And I find it funny that a lot of people on the carnivore diet say, I feel so much better eating beef than chicken or pork, but then they'll deny the benefits of eating grass-fed beef. Yet the reason they feel better eating beef is because of the better omega-3 to omega-6 ratio in the beef. Yet, why not go an extra step to get grass-fed? Oh, they don't care. It's really crazy how people try to justify certain things. As soon as things are okay, they don't want to spend more money. They don't want to put more effort into sourcing food. Who knows what it is? Next issue that is associated with diarrhea is rendered fat. Michaela Peterson actually said she had diarrhea for six weeks when she tried to increase her fat intake by consuming beef tallow. And ladies and gentlemen, if you have diarrhea for more than, I would say, two or three days, stop eating the food. Rendered fats have a degraded fat structure. You take animal fat and you render it in a pot at a very high temperature for a very long period of time. The difference between the tallow that most people buy and high quality is you making it yourself every week. When you heat it at a high temperature for a long period of time, it oxidizes like crazy. Then it sits on the shelf for a week, two weeks, in the freezer for six months. Who knows? What also ties in here is if it was an omega-3 or an omega-6 fat. So even if the rendered fat is high quality, grass-fed, it still could be oxidized and old. I made some beef tallow like a month ago and I tried eating it two days ago and it was definitely oxidized and, and didn't sit too well. So there is definitely a freshness element to rendered fats. And the solution for this is get raw fresh fat and just throw it in a pan and cook it when you eat. Use that as your fat source. And cooking it as little as possible will also improve digestion. And if you think about it, when this rendered fat hits your digestive system, it's much more concentrated than the raw fat or even lightly cooked animal fat. So be mindful that when you consume this fat and it's rendered, it digests much quicker. This means your body cannot produce enzymes, or at least your body needs to produce enzymes and bile much faster than it would if you would consume raw fat. So raw fat, lightly cooked fat, digests slower, body produces enzymes, maybe your body can't produce enough enzymes to keep up with rendered fat. One interesting story is there were some Arctic explorers and their snowmobile failed, so they were walking to get some gasoline, freezing their balls off, and a first Alaskan Native American came across them and gave them seal oil. They drank this seal oil and they got so warm they took their jackets off. So there's definitely something to be said about availability of rendered fat and it being from a high quality animal, but unfortunately the rendered fat that most people consume now, not the best thing. The final point to touch on is cooking temperature and how it negatively affects digestion. One aspect is the reduced moisture content of the food. This means that your body has to extract water from other cells in the body. The second thing is the degradation of protein and other nutrients. What this means is that there is more bulk and more waste 
as it moves through your digestive system. The final point ties into that. It's where your body doesn't recognize the denatured proteins and nutrients, so the stomach acid does not process it as quickly, so it requires more digestive enzymes for the cooked meat. On the other hand, almost every indigenous group did consume cooked meat, so the bonus of cooking meat a longer period of time is you essentially have a higher caloric source of nutrition that's more stressful on the digestive system and lower in nutrients. But if you're consuming twice as much cooked meat as raw meat, you're still getting the same amount of nutrients. You're just getting much more calories. So overall, doing things like reducing cooking temperature, increasing food quality, making sure to stay hydrated are things that can contribute to fixing your digestive issues. In regards to fat intake, this can be a problem for some people, although I've noticed it's more the type of fat. Uh, if you don't consume enough fat, you can definitely become constipated. And for most people, a 70 to 80% fat ratio works pretty well, depending on your lean body mass. I wouldn't necessarily jump to conclusions and increase the fat ratio in the diet. First, I would address the other issues and if all of those are good, then you can move on to increasing your fat intake. One concept to understand outside of things that cause diarrhea and constipation is the rate at which foods digest. Plant foods generally have a very short transit time, uh, as evident by vegans who usually have large bowel movements three to four times a day, whereas protein and fat spend a lot more time in the small intestine. This is because our body is extracting more nutrients from animal protein and fat than any other food. This is so evident in the digestive time of animal foods as well as the bowel movement size. Look at how much food a carnivore dieter eats and the size of their bowel movements versus a vegan dieter and the frequency and the size of their bowel movements. I used to joke around that I shit like a deer because I would have these small frequent bowel movements. The reason people see constipation on the carnivore diet initially is because meat has a longer transit time. So you are consuming foods, these high volume, low calorie plant foods that have a relatively short transit time, maybe one or two days total in your stomach. When you switch over to meat, meat takes anywhere from three to five days to digest depending on the person. So it's just going to take a couple extra days for that meat to get through your digestive system. If it takes longer than that, then you need to eat more food or you need to go over some of the things I mentioned earlier. And of course, ask yourself the question, am I actually constipated or have I just not had a bowel movement? So thank you guys for watching. If you guys would like to support the channel, please like, subscribe, and if you can, share the video. In the comments below, you will find my Amazon shop where I have some vitamin D3 supplements, some salts on my website, frank stefanocom I got some hygiene products, tooth powder, pomade, and lip balm, as well as deodorant. If you guys would like to reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one consultations, you can do so on that website or via email, frankatefano at gmail.com. This is for anyone who wants specific protocols in regards to improving their overall health and maybe you need a little bit of help with constipation. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. If you'd like to see any video topics in the future, please let me know.